guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Decrypto. It's by Ello, and it is a Codemaster game. You'll be playing three to eight players, take about a half an hour, and it's for ages 10 and up. In the game Decrypto, you're basically going to be playing as Codemasters, trying to decipher your opponent's codes and trying to conceal your codes from your opponents. Players are going to be drawing code cards, and you'll be getting a certain number, along with a board, depending on the team color that you are with secret words that are hidden like the secret Annie uh, orphan Annie decoder rings and whatnot that you see in the, uh, the old movies but you're gonna get these words you'll get these cards you'll be trying to basically have your team guess the cards uh, the, the words based on your clues and your opponents are gonna try and decipher the code that you're going to be utilizing every single round and vice versa as well in order to win the game you're going to need to decipher two of your opponent's codes or you're going to need to have your opponent miscommunicate with each other two times and that's basically going to be when they are too vague and not uh, not cohesive enough to give clues that are adequate for the cards and the codes but nevertheless if either of those instances happen then one of the teams is going to win it goes back and forth and it plays similar to code names a game that's pretty popular out there but it has some very very different features anyway let's go ahead and take it down below I'll show you what's in the game as well as how to play and then I'll give you my review so here we have Decrypto and everything included in the game. So let's go ahead and give you a rundown, except for, of course, my handy dandy pen. There are many like it, but this one is mine. This is the Decrypto score pad, and it is going to have a ton of these little uh, pieces of paper that you can utilize. There's one side for the white and one side for the black, and each team is going to get one of these pieces of paper per game. This is the rule book here, which you'll be utilizing for learning the solo variant, as well as any of the questions you might have. This is the timer, which you can utilize if you want, if people are taking too long. You've got these little code cards, these little hidden message cards or description cards here. These are code cards, and you're gonna have the black and as well as the white team. Miscommunication tokens, as well as uh, the uh, uh, successful interception tokens here. If your opponents get these two, you win. If you get these two, you win. Um, this over here is going to be for the solo variant of play, and that is basically going to be including all these big ones here. And then, of course, you got these little orphan Annie decoders, in which you're going to be placing four unique ones of these guys into these little areas here. You can do it either side, up or down. There's four different words on each of the cards here. I don't know if you can read it or not, but there's earth, there's heaven, there's magic, and then there's elf here. And only you can read it once they're put in here, so they're kind of like hidden. Uh, and of course, all the code cards have three different numbers on them, and they're all gonna pertain to the numbers one, two, three, or four. This is mostly what you're gonna get in the game, other than you're also going to, of course, get the box which is going to be fancy. It won't be as fancy as mine because I got a signature, but it is still gorgeous nonetheless. Anyway, let's go ahead and explain how to play the game now. So in the game, each player is going to get one of these, or each team is going to get one of these pieces of paper. So you'll take this and you'll take one of these and you're going to write the team uh, name up here. You can play with two or more players. And in a three player game, you're just going to have one person who will be the, uh, the code writer. But in a four player game, you'll have two on two and you're going to have one person who starts off as the encryptor and the other player who's going to be the guesser but that passes between rounds so after you go ahead and choose the decryptor for each team you're also going to take these four of these and randomly insert them into these little slots here and that will give you four random words for each of the teams this is the white team and this is the black teams uh, everybody's going to get their own unique deck for each team and to begin, each team's encoder is going to take one of these cards here, these code cards. And they're going to be secret, and only they get to see these. And these are the numbers in which they're going to be trying to put clues down. After each player has drawn their cards, they're going to then write hints down on their area for their color. So the white team will write over here, and the black team will actually write on the black team's side. Then, after both of them have written down their uh, their hints, so for instance, let's say that each of them got one of these. Uh, this this team got this, and this team got this. Uh, this is one, four, and two. You'll look at these here. This one says attack, and this is the one area. And then four is father, and then two is internet. So you're going to write words that are similar to these three words in the specific order, and so will the other player for three, four, one, which is magic, elf, and earth. These never change, however, 
But the clue cards or the clue words, basically the words you're going to be putting down in these areas will, and you don't want to be too vague and you also don't want to be too specific. After each playing player is player, each team's encoder has written down over here the uh, codes, then one of the teams will begin. And it's going to start with the white team. And so this other team is going to flip over to this side. And so let's go ahead and just show you an example. So this one here, like I said, is one, four, two. So that's attack father and internet so maybe attack will be oh i don't know let's go ahead and say uh um ouchie and then we have four which is father so we'll say um uh, maybe caregiver and then two is going to be internet so let's say web and so after the encoder for this specific team has written down their clue card, clue words, then they're going to pass this to their team members, in which case the team members are then going to look at the words associated here and write down the numbers they think these words associate with. So in this case, they don't get to see this, but they'll say, okay, ouchie is probably attack, so they can go ahead and guess one there. And caregiver is probably going to be father over sheep and internet, so that's going to be four. And then, of course, two is going to be internet with web, so that's very likely, so they'll probably write two down. And not only that, but the other team will, will also write down the words when the other team says these words out loud so that both teams can hear it. So they'll write ouchie, caregiver, and web here. And they will also guess. Now the first round, there's no interception. So the first, the, the, each for each playing, uh, play, for each other team, they won't be doing the interception. But after the first round, this team will have an opportunity to try and guess the code before the other team does. And so this team might put down something like uh, two, three, and four on the second round. This was the second round in which case after that happens everybody's written down their clues this white team's encryptor encoder is going to flip over this and reveal and uh, if this team is right they're going to score one of these little tokens here which means that they overheard correctly if not then nothing happens to them if this team is correct which they are they're going to get nothing but if they were wrong they'd get one of these miscommunications which means technically that if two of these go over here this team will lose and this team will win so that's basically what you want to try and avoid so nothing happening is 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 okay because you don't really want anything to happen on your turn you want to uh, be able to guess on your opponent's turn after that the same thing will happen for the black team so they're going to go ahead and flip over and they're going to go ahead and write their clues based on their code and have uh, this one will try and obviously guess and this team will then guess as well after that make sure that you write down down here what the clues are so for instance this would be ouchie for one this would be caregiver for four and this would be web for two and they will do the same on their side for the white teams and vice versa for when the black team goes it's going to play eight rounds and when one of the scoring conditions one of the winning conditions is met that is going to end the game uh, you can go ahead and switch out the uh, new cards for a new round, but that's pretty much the idea for uh, Decrypto. Anyway, let's come up and discuss it. I'll talk about the little timer here, some of the other words, and how it plays a little more, as well as my review. Decrypto is much like code names in a lot of ways. And the first thing is you want to be vague, but not too vague. You want your team to be able to understand what you're saying and the other team to not. However, as the game progresses, you're going to have to start being less and less uh, vague to get, or, or, or you have less and less options as to the different types of words that relate to other words. Like for instance, if it's the word magic, which you can't see because this is the orphan any decryption coder thing. But if the uh, word is magic, for three and it is round five you probably run out of things you probably said okay like uh, i don't know tuxedo or you said something like chains or uh tank things like that that involve magic maybe or magicians or whatever you how you want to do it, wizard uh till eventually the point where players or other teams are going to start understanding what that number is so they're like okay three it mean they might not know it's magic but that's okay they don't have to know they just have to know what is related to so if in somebody else's case they get three as the first one and they say something like mystical they're like oh well, that's similar to these other things so i know for instance that that number is specifically three and if they end up getting that for all of your words, you're in trouble. So the better you are at being vague and having words that are different from each other that are related to the same word, the better you're going to be in. But the game kind of pushes you to eventually have to start stating words that are very similar to each other and giving the other team a lot of hints and clues. 
And if you're too vague, obviously your, your own teammates aren't gonna figure out what numbers you're referring to, and then you're in a whole new world of trouble. It is a very, very fun game. This has won a ton of awards by a ton of people, and that's because it's very, very enjoyable. Those of you who like code names, other like, s sort of like secret hidden password, it reminds me of password basically, uh, games, then this is definitely gonna be for you. It's a family game, it's light, it's simple, it has a ton of replayability in it, more than you'll probably ever play, and it's got a ton of additional uh, these little boards here that you can go ahead and write down. I always prefer to have the uh, dry erase markers and whatnot uh, and just have maybe two of these and so you can just erase them and use them over and over again. But what they provide you here is definitely enough. Uh, of course, like I said, I'd prefer it the other way around. But nevertheless, it, it is what it is. Uh, all the components are high quality. It comes with a timer that will indicate uh, if people are taking too long, just like in code names, you'll flip it over and it'll speed the other team up. There are tons of codes, there's two stacks of these, and there's front and back, there's four words on each. You're never gonna use all of these, uh, unlike in code names where it's likely that you're gonna see, at least see words more than once. In this case, you probably are not going to by the time you move on to the next game. And of course, this also has solo mode, which I actually didn't play for this one, but I imagine it'll play similarly to uh, how you would play the base game. I like the little stand-up stuff. I like all the uh, the artwork on it. It's fun. It's cute. It is exactly what it needs to be, so it's very minimalistic in that sense. But it does its job, and it is a fun family game. This is what I'm going to take to Hawaii to show my uncles and to show my other family. Something I think people are going to get into really easily, really quickly. And it's going to be a game that's going to see play quite often with those non-gamers, uh, people who like games like Cards Against Humanity, Apples to Apples, and all that kind of stuff. This is a simple one to jump in, but it has a little bit more meat to it. It's a little bit more interesting, and I prefer this one two code names just because of the fact that you're 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 doing exactly what that game does but you're doing it a little bit differently in the sense that you're trying to not help the enemy team and you're trying to help your team well i mean i guess they both do this, that similarly in, in in code names but for some reason it just feels like it works just a little bit better in this one but uh that might just be my preference they're both really good games overall decrypto is a fun and exciting game that i think pretty much any family gamer is going to enjoy definitely want to bring out for gateway gamer definitely definitely check out this game down below by LL probably my favorite game of theirs so far and that says a lot <laughs>